Tavis Bailey. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, super excited to talk with you. Um, Yeah, so I've gotten to know you just a little bit over the past six months. I know you came through some KEC events, and so I've been learning that you are not only the owner of Printing Image, but also of a gym. Tell me what it's like to be a serial entrepreneur out here. Yes, uh, being a serial entrepreneur in Knoxville is interesting. So technically at one point my wife and I hit three LLCs that we were managing and operating. Three? And yes, there's another that we have some real estate in and okay. we've been managing that. Um, and it is a lot. So yeah. we actually, and then you mix into that the fact that we just had a son and we're like, whoa, too many Fourth going LLC. On. I'm like, <laughs> there's so no we, insurance on that one. <laughs> exactly. So we started to like just look at things and then we actually ran into issues with the landlord at Knoxville Open Gym. Oh, dang. And so it actually worked out best, like, actually, just shut it down. Okay. And the day that Knoxville Open Gym was no longer doing business was the day that my son was due. And I was like, what about a chapter closing and another one starting? Right. And so we're essentially wow. in the process of just shutting that down and okay. then putting all of our resources into the printing company and then our family. So okay. like, we're, at, you know, starting a family. Incredible. And it's just want to be like somewhat wise man told me like, hey, did you only get 30 days, the first 30 days with your first child once. once you can have your whole life and never have that back yeah money will never change that and so i've just been super honed in on being present wow well, yeah. that is like i mean well, talk about timing and, and watching that lineup that's really amazing um so speaking of the printing company that mm -hmm. you own printing image you took over a family business mm -hmm. and kind of inherited a legacy in a way mm -hmm. but then you you also have the opportunity to create something new for yourself so how have you gone about deciding what you're going to preserve and what you're going to add in and change. What's that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so my wife and I have done, Cassie and I have done, Cassie's my partner. Yep. Yeah. So I um, just want to be straightforward with that. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's a really interesting because you, you take over a business that someone was obviously looking to get out of. Um, right. There's a reason why people are looking to get out of business. There's a reason why other family doesn't want to take it over from them. Um, so you know that you're going into that. Um, and with the printing industry, the printing world, uh, it's one of those industries a lot of people say, like, dude, that's a dying industry, like, that's dying. And to those people, I say, when, how are companies going to compete in the digital world when the internet and right. it's, it becomes- You're breathing new life into it. Exactly. T tell us about, like, the new, the additional things that you've added on that weren't there, there before. before. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. as we evaluate the business, we just saw that there were opportunities that the former owners were not looking to move into the new age, the digital age. Yeah. And, you know, understanding that the digital age is here, there's a certain way that print fits in, right? right. Print is no longer- the only way to get your word and name out print right. now is is being evaluated against it digital. works together yeah and and so where we are just kind of going about the business a little differently is we want to be more on less we are printers we print things more in the design marketing yeah. um consultative business growth side of things yeah so we want customers to come to us and say hey i'm trying to grow my business hey i'm trying to increase my presence build my reach right um and then we can then just go about executing the marketing strategies yeah what we noticed is i'm as a salesperson by trade i got out and started hunting for business right away and i noticed that like the marketing firms are doing all the printing and then i was like i don't want to be a marketing firm but there's certain work that we can yeah. execute and do ourselves and just kind of you know, be a one-stop shop. So that's kind of yeah. what I've been working on. And I feel like that's a really unique um, space that you have created for yourself. And it's such a value to add to companies because they don't realize how much both digital and print are, ne you know, it can be like, they oh, well, we put hand all hand. our time into these pamphlets, but no one's, you know, getting our pamphlets or whatever. So but I, I love that direction that you guys are taking. I'm also curious about the, I, I feel like you have um, like a never afraid to try anything kind of approach. And maybe you would disagree. That's true. No, that is true. <laughs> but I'm wondering, like, where do you think that was cultivated and developed in you? Like, in your past, you've, you've done quite a few different things. Yeah. I would say it's specifically, my wife, Cassie and I talk about this all the time. Um, it comes back to, like, identifying and making the agreement that you're the kind of person that figures things out. Yeah. And once you identify that, hey, I'm a person that figures things out, then now being in a new and uncomfortable situations, 
um, is now comfortable. So for hmm. me, specifically in my past, it was becoming an Olympian. I think that's yeah. one of the things that... <laughs> Casual. He, yeah. he became an Olympian. 2016. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was an awesome experience. Yeah. But what, what that did for me was, is it gave me an opportunity to like... I mean, there was a time where I wasn't an Olympian, right? I was just an uh, All-American at Tennessee. I just lost the national title. I'd never won a national. I'd never won an SEC meet. And I was just good, yeah. right? And I said, hey, it's something that I want to do. Like, I'm going to make an Olympic team. I'm going to put my whole entire heart, soul, body, and mind in yep. that. And then I'm going to pursue it relentlessly. And all of a sudden, like, I find myself on an Olympic team. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay. I put a plan together. I surrounded myself with people that were – um, could make me better, and then I stayed consistent, executed the plan, and I found success. Yeah. And then so now I'm sitting about here, mindset. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm sitting here like, wait a second. I wonder if I can take this same concept, the same mindset, and apply it somewhere else. Right. And then at that point, it doesn't matter what the medium is. I'm just applying my mindset somewhere, figuring something out, and then hoping to find success. Right. Right. Which obviously mindset plus skill, you know, I, yeah. I can have all the mindset I want, but so tell me also, I mean, going back to the Olympic experience and just your experience as a athlete at UT, um, when you talk about surrounding yourself with people that can help you succeed, like what, how, how did you go about like finding those coaches, mm -hmm. mentors, and how have they really like helped you make yeah, you into the person you are today? Question. So, um, coming to UT, uh, John Frazier recruited me, throws coach at the time. He was a big impact, but on my official visit, there was yeah. a gentleman named Matthew Hody, and the guy changed my life because essentially he came, he was at UT, he had just redshirted a year, and he was like, I got four years here, I need someone to train with, I'm trying to make it to the elite level. Yep. He was a top national thrower coming out of high school, and then I'm like, hey man, I'm coming in playing football. Yeah. Right? I technically just redshirted a year too. Okay. I have four years of eligibility, and he looks at me and he's like, dude, we can run the SEC together. We can... Like, the two of us will train together. We'll have our whole careers together. And that's where I was like, there might be something to this. So right. I decided to come to UT. Okay. And then the relationship that him and I built, we lived together for a few years. Um, we trained together. We lifted together. I mean, we were like, we shared a squat rack for four years, right? Like, wow. we shared implements for years. Um, and what that did was, is it like, I would consider Matthew Hody an A player. So he made me rise to a level that I wasn't at before. Yeah. Um, he called me out when I was wanting to drink and party too much. Um, <laughs> he held me accountable to the goals right. that I set in place. And then um, as, you know, our, we're getting to the end of our time at Tennessee, Matt saying, hey, dude, I'm ready to shut it down, get married, go start my family, move to Nashville. And I'm like, man, I really want to make this push for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. And here comes Stephen Mosia, a shot putter from Cornell, um, he was just randomly interviewing uh, for a job in Knoxville with Emerson Electric and hit me up. And next thing we started talking, and the next I went full blown sales pitch like, dude, <laughs> I need you in Knoxville. I'm trying to make the an sales team blood here. is in you. Let's That's get awesome. you here. Let's, um, <laughs> like, I can help you find an apartment. Like, yeah. you're, like, I've already blazed the path. I just need someone to train with. Okay. So and you just had an eye for who you were looking for, who could really motivate you, yes. and, and then I'm, grab him. I have met Stephen Mosia through track, right? So okay. in t at NCAAs in 2015, that was my last year there, I got second in the discus and dramatic fashion, and Steven Mosia got second in the shot put in dramatic fashion. Wow. So we were kind of like, we knew like that each other were A players, yeah. and we knew that we had had um, some like similar burns and fires inside of us. Okay. So we banded together and made what we called uh, the Runner Up Track and Field Club. I love that. And so it was just that is amazing. <laughs> I love that. And then that. my coach John Newell <laughs> led that up, and okay, that was where I learned like yeah, surround yourself with eight players like Steve. Steve made the Olympic team for Nigeria, and then uh -huh. the he knew that he was going to make the Olympic team since January that year, and so. You know, February. I know my my season didn't actually start till March and April. Okay. So like being around someone that's like I'm already on the team, then it's like well, I'm on the I'm, team. Too. Yep, I'm, it puts it in that mindset yeah. once again. And that's the U.S. Really team cool. was like going to be a whole different bear to make. Yeah. And I had to go like duke it out on site for that spot. Wow. But I was like, no, I'm on the team. I'm I'm taking on that mindset. And it takes other people that are succeeding to really help bring you up. Yeah, that is okay. I, Coming from a perspective, as a creative, I feel, and maybe not as creative as me, mm -hmm. I feel like I often have this imposter syndrome of like, wait, do I belong here? Like, am I supposed to be here? But I really love how when you just tell yourself like, no, I'm on the team. 
I yeah. I belong here. That that really can change the outcome. So yeah. I love that. Um, I am curious uh, to know about your experience with 100 Knottsville. Yeah. And just um, tell me, tell, first tell me like your experience with your mentor and what it meant to have somebody who would kind of blaze the trail ahead of you walking alongside you. What'd you glean yeah. from that relationship? So my mentor was Tommy Smith. Uh, Tommy was awesome. Man, I could not have asked for more in a mentor. Um, first, his background's in marketing. Um, yeah. And so the skill set that he has is the skill set that we're growing or moving our shop towards. Right. Um, and so he kind of helped me connect the dots and some bigger concepts at high levels there. But then what Tommy really did, and this is with what I was came to 100 Oxford for, was I was looking for connections. I was looking to grow and build a network. Um, being in the print marketing industry, like technically everybody and anybody's a client of yours, yep. can be a client, yep. but then there's clients that you really, really want, and those are gonna need some introductions and some extra yeah. little massaging to get in front of. So Tommy essentially opened his Rolodex up and helped open some doors, make some connections. Amazing. Um, and you know, to this day, I'm still like following up and closing out on some yeah. of the leads and That's things awesome. that Tommy set me up with. Yeah, oh, wow, I love that. Um, tell me about like some, some ideas that you had in your head going into the program and maybe, uh, unexpected outcome. So when you went in, what was your picture of what the 100 Knoxville cohort would be like? And then what did it, yeah. did, did anything change as you went through? Yeah. Um, let's see. I would say if anything, things kind of changed more afterwards. So okay. coming into the program, I was just didn't know what to expect. My main goal was Open -minded. just to like... I just want to meet more people. Okay. I want to meet Great. more people that are in different things, build more relationships. Um, I'm, you know, I love making friends and meeting new people and just getting involved in stuff. So I'm like, yeah. that's why we own a print company. So let's go do that, right? Uh, let's be in the Knoxville 100. Uh, like that was something that the cohort that, feel, yeah, the family feel, like be in a cohort feel. of something, right? Um, and so that's kind of pretty much what I came for. I was like, hey, I just want to get my name out here. Um, going through the program. Uh, great content from Candace and Catherine. Uh, awesome group of people to come through the program with. But I would say afterwards, I think what the Knox 100 program did was it like opened my eyes more than anything. Like hmm. it was like, hey, I went in open minded, but then it like really opened my <laughs> Even eyes more to open like, than you knew. wait a second, there's situations that can be created that are like win, win, win situations where there's like, when certain people come together with more philanthropic goals, then yeah. results can be generated sometimes um, organically, right? Yeah. And so what what the program truly did was like, it opened my eyes like, oh, there's a different way of doing business, right? Like, so mm -hmm. in the print industry, and this is where we found success is doing business with nonprofits so far, and that's business we've been going after. And then all of a sudden being around the, in the Knox 100, the same concepts, that I began to like start to see, I'm like, wait, I think the, I can take these concepts and apply them elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of what we've been working on now is just like, how can we create win, win, win situations, mm -hmm. right? Let's find problems that people have um, in their marketing and print world and then look to solve them. And yeah. then, but sometimes those problems and things could be the person could not know that they have those problems, right? Like it could be anything from, we're trying yeah. to like grow things, we're trying to do things. So it's like being in the community, knowing all the people, now you get introduced to people that have problems because you're someone who's a problem solver. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. So that's kind of where we've just been putting, just getting more pieces and putting okay. it together. Figuring it out, mm -hmm. very cool. Um, how can the Knoxville community support you? What's maybe one thing that you need right now? Yes, um, it's funny, a good <laughs> question, because uh, we, we just had our first son, and everyone's like, man, what can we do right. to, like, <laughs> you know, you need a registry, and I'm like, no, actually, I think we're taken care of, but what we could have, like, a warm referral is literally all yeah. we could ever ask for. Okay. Um, so, the book, bit like you asked earlier, like, you know, the legacy we took over, the book of business that we had kind of inherited, um, or took over with the business, was yeah. um, cultivated, right? you know, purposefully or not purposely, regardless of how you look at it, like, you know, the book of business kind of reflects the owner and what the owner is right. doing, For sure. um, policies they had in place, and where we're trying to, like, the book of business that we took over was a little more around, um, you know, business to consumer 
there was a little business to business, okay. business to consumer, and okay. where we're trying to do a lot more business to business. More, so okay. we're trying to do more, you know, we love our walk-in business, but we're trying to do more business for pilot. We're trying to do more business yep. for, you know, local banks. Business that ultimately, like, it's super awesome to, you know, to get in and donate projects and support things. Yeah. But then you also need to make money. To make to a pay, little money. To yeah. pay bills yeah. and <laughs> give your, you know, take care of your employees. And so... Right. You know, there's like, hey, I, I can't wait to, you know, get involved in more nonprofits and sponsor things and donate printed items to people having events um, that are close to my heart. But then to some degree, it's like, hey, um, we need more business from some of our corporate. bigger clients. Yep. And then okay. that's where people can help. Right. Like okay. someone can be in a, you know, a friend of ours we were having dinner with. And she was like, I never thought. We just printed A, B, and C through A, B, and C. I never thought to, to go through you guys. Yeah, yeah. And okay. so, if you know anybody that's using Canva, anybody that's using um, VistaPrint, you know, anybody that's you know looking to grow a business, I think one of the big pieces or opportunities in print is a lot of people when we're out selling and having conversations, I ask. When I was early, I was asking, like, hey, like, tell me what you print. We don't print anything. Wow, no, mm. we're print. That's old way. We're moved. We're all on. We're all in social media. Right. And then when you, like. Everybody's got business cards. And, Everybody's, And then yeah. when you really get into it, they're like, yeah, we're not getting ROI on our social media return. How can we increase that? And it's like, oh, have you thought about pairing it with a print piece? And then they're like, oh. Okay. I, I see where that print is actually helping Helping dip- people understand it's a little bit broader. Yeah. yeah. So in the okay. marketing world, there's seven touches. And there's seven touches to get someone to buy is like one of the common marketing phrases. Well, like Instagram, social, Instagram and Facebook can be one, two, and three. Where's four, five, and six come from? Right. It comes from a wrapped van. It comes from um, a mail postcard in someone's mailbox. It comes from a billboard, a banner, a yard sign. Those yeah. other interactions are where print gets someone to seven. Yeah. You guys are really a c- cover it all service. So I, mm-hmm. I love that. And I... Um, would encourage you guys who are listening to go and find Printing Image. Is it Printing Image Knox or Printing Image? It's Printing Image. Printingimage.com and support Tavis and Cassie as they build their business. Thank you.